So, today's class uh, most of the time we will try to spend in looking over a case scenario and then uh, followed with some practice problems problem. So, as a case study let us take a look at uh, this notion of uh, say traffic congestion. So, this can even illustrate what kind of policy resistance that comes up and how we can iteratively build a model which try to encompass at least the key aspects towards traffic congestion. First some background. So, there are the freight transport by road has risen from 6 billion tons this for uh, statistics for India in 51 to 1100 billion ton per kilometer in 2000. So, over 50 years and passenger traffic has also raised from 23 billion passenger kilometer to uh, 2875 billion passengers per kilometer during the same period. So, the order of the growth has been tremendous. The annual growth rate of traffic expected to be 10 to 11 percent. Then there is a boom in automobile structure uh, sector that leads to increase in road traffic in the future. So, that is a part of the traffic, but when you look at the capacity that is a road network national highways carry near 40 percent of capacity uh, traffic among national highways and state highways only 2 percent of the lanes are 4 lanes 34 percent 2 lanes 64 percent single lane this is as of 2004 it is not that updated, but but both would have increased since then. So, we can assume a parallel or similar kind of increases or increase in the uh, cars on the road versus the road network. Uh, the main idea is the trend the growth percentages that has been tremendous uh, both in the capacity as well as uh, in the traffic. So, now this is uh, so, we would like to now model this concept of traffic congestion as well as how we are going to say uh, increase the capacity. A simple example we saw last class as an example for delays itself captured this where you try to model traffic congestion as well as uh, how do you add capacity, how do you add capacity to road network increasing amount of paved roads. So, that you can reach further places or widening the existing roads either way it is going to involve construction. So, only we are going to increase capacity is going road construction either way maybe we will build better bridges you know do some shortcuts for different locations tunnels or uh, let us expand the road network by widening rail lane widening is very common as well as uh, expanding the reach of paved roads into more remote areas or new locations and things like that ok. So, model for traffic congestion. Let us look at an open loop view. Pretty much what we want to try is that I know there seems to be some congestion you know when uh, how do you measure congestion? Congestion in the road after a delay we find that road construction happens. Most of the time it is not the other way like initially there is a lot of congestion then government invests in expanding the road facilities there and as soon as road construction is finished traffic seems you know lighter and going smoother. So, how do we measure this congestion? How can we measure this congestion? Or what do we mean by congestion? Anyone? Density of vehicles on the road, what does it affect? Speed, eventually what? Travel time. So, what we are interested in is congestion or delay or let us uh, make a better note called as travel time. So, 
So, we can expect that as as travel time increases then we want after some delay it will prompt action to expand the road capacity by involving road construction right. This is what we want to do because the density in one hand yeah, can be a little misleading because it are just taking it from point in time or the speed can be regulated, but as long as traffic seems to be moving and you are getting from one point to other within your preferred travel time then you people are happy correct. But this kind of open loop is not sufficient because even in my own even in your own narration in our head what we want to do is move now towards the let us start with the basic closed loop view. So, in closed loop view let us use couple of variables let us say call it uh, travel time and uh, ok. What we are trying to model is this entire scenario of how traffic congestion as well as uh, movement in the road traffic how it is affecting our uh, road construction and highway capacity expansion and the interrelated systems within that. So, that is a very broad scope and we will just iterate it and move ahead. So, let us define congestion by using what we call as travel time. What affects travel time? In some of the things is already given, what affects travel time? Density or you have uh, the number of vehicles on the road as well as the capacity of the road, right, or the highway capacity affects it as well as number of vehicles or uh, the volume of traffic. We will make it as part of the capacity, let us say highway capacity we will determine you know, quality is bad we will just transfer it into uh, the. So, travel time uh, is uh, what can I say um, depends on capacity of highway. Capacity of highway in turn depends on the number of lanes, it depends on the quality of the road number of signals that is there, other bottlenecks that can appear at some distinct points in time, I mean distinct uh, point in space uh, depends on capacity of highway and volume of traffic, right. So, we have two variables which we say can affect our travel time, but road construction does not immediately happen. Suppose even if the road is narrow or there is only single or two lane road, but as long as uh, uh, what can I say uh, there is no new pressure to uh, expand the road network, road construction is not affected ok or as there is no pressure to reduce congestion. So, let us create identify a new variable called as pressure to reduce congestion. So, more the pressure we can expect that this is going to result in uh, as there is more pressure to reduce congestion it will prompt their government to take up road construction activities where road construction activities once it is completed will result in increased capacity for the highways ok. So, this is what we kind of can expect. But this pressure to reduce congestion itself will depend on not just the travel time, it will be a function of both the travel time as well as the desired travel time. If it takes 10 minutes to go somewhere and people are happy with the 10 minutes, then there is not real pressure to reduce it. But if you want to do the same thing in 5 minutes, then that is when the pressure comes, right. So, we want to define those goals explicitly. So, let us try to draw this preliminary loop. Uh, right now as our first closed loop. So, let us uh, 
Twitter. Travel time is defined by our highway capacity. as well as traffic volume. If traffic volume is large, we expect the travel time to be large. Highway capacity is large, we expect the traffic volume uh, time to be lower. And based on the travel time, let us have a variable called as pressure to reduce congestion and as pressure to reduce congestion is large, we take up road construction. And as road construction after a delay results in increased highway capacity. Okay. So, as pressure to reduce congestion increases, road construction activities are going to increase. As road construction activity increases, after some delay, the highway capacity will increase. It takes time to expand roads, time to you know, you have seen all that. And as highway capacity is more, then the travel time goes down. Now, as travel time increases, the pressure to reduce congestion is also needs to increase, but that increase is related to what we can call as desired travel time. So, if you see here what it just did is apply some other guidelines that we gave, we had. So, we here if you look at this loop, it is a negative feedback loop for road construction. So, as travel time is more, there is pressure to reduce congestion. As pressure to reduce congestion is increases, road construction activities increase. As road construction increases, after some delay, the capacity increases. And as capacity increases, the travel time falls. So, that is a negative feedback that is happening. But what is the goal here? The goal will be has to be done explicitly, it cannot keep on happening like this. So, the goal is the desired travel time. Based on that, you decide whether it is to be a one lane to two lane or one to four lanes or one to six lanes depends on the desired travel time. So, this defines your goal of the system. Another point is while we are actually doing this kind of modeling, it is good to actually start thinking in some sort of uh, units that we want to try because it will also help in identifying some new variables etcetera that we may want in the system later. Like we have uh, say for example, these three variables uh, travel time, traffic volume, highway capacity or desired travel time. We can think of what kind of units that we can have for these. For example, we have uh, variables like uh, Let us say traffic volume. So, good to consider units while modeling. A suggested units could be that if you want uh, say traffic volume. It could be a say vehicle miles per day, uh, then highway capacity so eventually we want to compare highway capacity as well as our traffic volume. So it is good to then have both in the same units. Eventually that is how the model has to come to. Highway capacity can also be defined as the vehicle miles say per time unit, say per day or per minute or whatever it is, uh, the same time units can be considered. So, this means that okay, now we can compare it. Suppose, you have different highway capacity in terms of width of the road, then comparing width of the road to vehicle miles per day, then how will we compare it? 
we can't subtract it or we can't divide it or something because the units are uh, may not necessarily match. Again, these are not all the variables, I am just giving an illustration traffic volume, highway capacity, then travel time. Travel time itself could be say uh, minutes per trip or something like that. So, we, the idea here is we want to come up with some metric for what kind of units that we are looking at, ok. This is how we are going to start measuring these values and uh, this is how we are going to define some highway capacities and travel time which is going to be minutes per trip. Then we need to get some say example like average trip length or something so that we can use it to figure out what is the uh, uh, how we are going to measure the uh, measure the time units and things like that. This is just a kind of uh, illustrative idea of how you are think about units. Now, as this travel time increases, as I told, we are going to have congestion. So, we define that as travel time is more, then congestion is more. So, and this is a negative feedback loop. When we are in, when we start building the model, this is kind of uh, small steps that we can take to figure out, okay, let us draw some broad loops to close the system and then let us look at currently what are the variables that are outside the loop. We have two variables, one is the desired travel time, other is the traffic volume. Desired travel time sounds like exogenous variable in the outside system because it is what people expect. Uh, then we have traffic volume. Can traffic volume be made endogenous? What do you think affects the traffic volume? What all affects the traffic volume? Number of vehicles and then population affects the number of vehicles, fine. Other number of vehicles, what else? Just because there is a lot of vehicles, what do they need to do? The final units we just wrote as vehicle miles per day, number of cars just gives vehicles. Where will I get miles in per day? Distance, the distance travelled. Quality of road affects the highway capacity. So, the traffic volume itself, uh, it depends on the day of the week, is fine. Let us, uh, what else? You have got two things. One is you have got the number of vehicles, which is fine, uh, or number of cars or number of vehicles. Second is uh, we need the vehicle miles per day. So, for miles, we need the what is average distance or average trip uh, distance. Average time is what you already got as travel time. So, travel time, you already got it. But what are you looking at traffic volume? So, one is how many cars are there and what is the average distance per trip that they are making. And we can also have one more variable called average number of trips per day. If for example, uh, uh, let us say uh, if we have a nice highway or let us say for even inside campus when there are uh, crops right here, the traffic is very low. So, even if we forget some things, we can make multiple trips to keep buying things. But if it is going to take you half an hour to reach let us say if you 2 kilometers to buy things, then you might say even if you forget something, you are not going to make the second trip. So, if there is capacity is large, then you may be able to make more discretionary trips or more number of trips you can make. That is one and two, you will make longer trips. Define uh, traffic volume as these three. Uh, traffic volume can be affected by the trips per day. Average trip length and uh, vehicles in region.
people start taking more trips then my traffic volume is going to be more as average trip length increases traffic volume is going to be more there is more traffic congestion outside iit is caused by people not from pavai people from not in pavai because they are all traveling large distances people in western suburb want to work in eastern suburb people in eastern suburb want to work in western suburb so it causes traffic jam in pavai and more cars in the region we can expect higher traffic volume and as was also suggested vehicle in the region depends on the uh, uh, population and uh, to some extent on the economic activity of region as more the population more vehicles can be in the region and uh, or but just that doesn't affect we can also have a, let us say average vehicles per person as more average vehicle per person is there vehicle region is going to increase which is going to contribute to traffic volume now let us try to close this loop by looking at suppose my travel time became easy if the travel time is large and my divide my desired travel time as 15 minutes but my current travel time is say half an hour then it causes pressure to reduce how uh, pressure to reduce congestion right suppose the capacity is so big that you are now able to go there really fast so that will attract you to driving imagine nice well laid smooth roads you love to drive we don't want to walk we don't want to take public transport we may just want to drive correct so let us introduce that variable called attractiveness to driving here i'm reversing the signs right just observe as travel time desired travel time here travel time is plus desired travel time minus so my actual travel time is here but desired is here so there is huge gap then that causes pressure to reduce congestion but now if my travel time is only 5 minutes but my desired travel time is like i'm willing to spend say 10 minutes to go there so that means you are more attracted to driving because roads are free and you can go at higher speed and it is much more pleasure driving so and more you are attracted to drive you will do more trips per day you will just go out so you can take a spin in your motor bike in your new motor bike or new car you will go longer distance you will not go to the nearest shop you will say okay are yaar what is this nice road why the hell i am stopping in nearest shop let me travel little longer distance and go to the other bigger shop or some other fancy place which has you know near mall etc but you get the relation right like these are just opposing to each other like we, do, we may not even have two variables but this is just to illustrate the point that the travel time is too high and people you know for short distance itself spend long long time to go that causes pressure to reduce congestion but your travel time is quite smooth and uh, your uh, then that will attract you to do more driving we can have both ways we can have this one also will that uh, will it make people happy as more you are attracted to driving then your desired travel time also increases so that's not the only one which attracts us to driving we cannot consider okay let's uh, kind of finish this loop first so here if you see as attract as uh, let's say we are more at we are more prone to say uh, prefer driving then we do more trips per day which increases in traffic volume which increases your travel time which then reduces your attractiveness to driving each time you are getting caught in traffic jam you are you don't like it so this becomes a negative feedback loop same thing goes here 
as more attracted to driving you do more uh, longer trips, but then as traffic volume increases travel time increases then your attractiveness driving comes down it takes much longer time. So, we try to avoid or come up with another route things like that. So, that again becomes a balancing loop attractiveness to driving to average vehicles per person it is not enough we just go through this only looking at private vehicles ownership many times the attractiveness to private vehicles of course based on other than just simple pleasure is also the utility of it because most of the commute is for work. Uh, so, we would like to bring in the adequacy of public transit itself on how attractive it is to drive. So, let us introduce those two variables called as adequacy of public transit as a negative relation in the sense more adequate the public transit is it reduces your attractiveness to driving if you have really good public transit it works the other way if public transit is not good enough then attractiveness to driving increases. And as more people start owning cycles or preferring their own means of transport maybe you get a better pair of shoes that is also part of private ownership. So, that can also reduce the what can I say public transit ridership now let us uh, look at what I have done I have introduced a new external variable called adequacy of public transit and attractive driving and as attractive driving becomes larger the public transit ridership falls down and it also has as it falls down the number of vehicles average vehicle per person will also increase. Uh, I could have put a direct link also, but let us just go with this uh, diagram for now. So, people start buying more vehicles. And as they start buying more vehicles, more vehicle region will increase, which will increase the traffic volume, which increases the travel time, which reduces the attractiveness to driving. Uh, so, this again I have 1, 2, 3 negative feedback links. So, this also becomes a larger negative feedback within the system. 